before we get into the Suzuki maintenance issues, but it's damn near brand new. Brand new, folks. Off of eBay. About a $40 savings by getting it off of this dude who said, oh, this was my daddy's. He hardly ever used it. No shit, that thing has never been used. It just doesn't have the box. Being from like Kentucky, I doubt this thing was getting do doused in salt water. And what is this? This is Captain Dave's favorite reel of all time. Workhorse for charters. This is the workhorse, the Shimano TR100G ball bearing drag. Yeah, the only place there's bearings is literally right inside here. Over on this side, bronze bushings that never wear out and they don't care how wet they get. And then inside this side of the spool, there's a bronze bearing that the spool rides on. So the only thing that's got ball bearings is right there and there goes the god dang bat phone again with another freaking solicitor alrighty I'm back here uh, Suzuki maintenance freaks that's three months of the interior anodes and this isn't all of them I still get out more I still got more I gotta take out some of these I'm gonna clean up and probably reuse if I can I don't know I still got two more to take out I'll show you where they come from. You know, I got other videos. And then, you know, they, people watch those videos, but then they don't watch any of the newer videos. They keep watching the same old thing over and over and over. The first video I ever did about these anodes. I've got numerous videos about exactly what I'm gonna do today. The only reason I do these videos is because they, they seem to be ones that actually get watched. So let me show you what I was doing here. So here's your anode positions in the Suzuki. There's one there, one there, one there. I've done this I don't know how many times. It's getting a little redundant. There's one right there. Okay, one right there, one right there. This one right here is an SOB every single time. For some reason, this one right here always is stuck. There's so much buildup around it. There's a couple more down here, and you notice there's no lower unit. Prior to me going in for my prostate surgery, I whacked into a rock in the St. John's River uh, and it bent the prop, stainless prop, and then immediately, you know, you got saltwater intrusion. I'm hoping that's all it is. So my lower unit is at the shop right now getting totally resealed, and I made a $150 order through Boats.net. I took that box and pulled out of the water this past Monday and drove right in front of his shop and he walked out and he yanked my lower unit off. But at the same time, my prop went to General Propeller down in Central Florida. And in one week, they turned around and I'm telling you, it looks brand new. They totally refinished my prop. So I'm gonna show you what the rest of what I do here. Since the lower unit's off, hopefully I might be picking it up tomorrow's Thursday or maybe Friday. And I'm gonna be back on the water again with that. I'm going to show you where the other, there's actually a uh, uh, zinc anode that looks just like those down in the nose cone of a 250 at the low water pickup. I can't change that one out, but I'm going to show you where another one is. All right, maintenance freaks. Right here is your next anode. And that is because your oil Crank, your crankcase, your oil pan is right there. So, right where that light is, right, right there, that's what every little cover looks like. So that's where the next interior anode is, okay? If you're not changing these, it's because you're not looking at your manual or service manual, or you're not looking at nothing. It says every three months, and now you look, you see what mine look like after three months? And then, of course, the next one would be down in your lower unit down here. So, I'm going to pop that and see what she looks like. And then I'm going to show you why I'm actually doing this. Alrighty, I'm back, maintenance freaks. There's the one that just came out right next to the oil pan. It's quite crusty. This is so important. you got to find a 10... I don't know what this is, 10 millimeter, I can't remember. You're just gonna have to take one of these to a good hardware store, like an Ace, 
or something that carries, you know, they got all those shelves full of bolt boxes and fasteners and all that, because that's what I did. I just took one of these with me. When this bolt goes in, let me show you the bolt. Where is the bolt? All right. This is what it looks like when it's in your engine. That's what it looks like. So you got to take this bolt out. And then, of course, this one just goes in and out because it's smaller, okay? If yours hasn't been out for a long time, it's going to be one SOB. You're going to have to find a fine thread like this because this is how you do it. You go in this fine thread and it goes in to here and you got to use this bolt as a puller because if there, you've got so much crap build up, which you probably will, I get one where I can't even hardly budget without, you know, yanking. I got to tap on this, tap on this before it actually comes out because the buildup inside will get this big around, you know, it'll get big around and then you kind of pull it out. So that's what it looks like. And then you've got to take this screw out. You've got to have, you got to go and buy new zincs and you want to buy new O-rings. See that O-ring right there? So you got to buy that zinc and that O-ring. They're not real expensive. You can do this whole job. You order it off of boats.net. You look up your, your engine's model number under Suzuki or Yamaha, whatever. But I think these Yamaha ones are a little, a little more difficult to get to. Suzuki makes it relatively easy, even though to pull this one out, you got to take off your side Tupperware, which I hate. Hate dealing with that Tupperware. But there you go. You take this out. You replace it, you put on a new O-ring, and you put everything back in the order in which you just took it. So these will slide in, you grease the heck out of this, and it'll pop back in the hole. But I'm not going into major detail about this. I'm just gonna, I'm just showing you. Because there is a project that's a conclusion at the end of this video. That's the whole point, all right? So let me get back to work here and pull this zinc off, plug it back in, because you wanna plug your holes with what I'm doing next, which is the major flush. Because you gotta remember too, one thing about the St. John's River, it's not only salinity, it's acidic. It's full of tannin. It's full of grit, dirt, sand, and dredging until 2023. So we're gonna be putting up with a lot of crap in that river, folks. A lot of crap. Do you ever feel like you need a break in life? Do you ever feel like you're stressed? Do you ever need to calm down and just say, I need some me time. Do you ever want to get rid of the wife, the kids, and everything, and just chill out with your outboard motor, hang out with it for a day, and enjoy an icy cold PBR? <sighs> Suzuki outboards, a quiet afternoon, a cold PBR. That's life. Alrighty, Suzuki maintenance freaks, here you go. This is the whole reason for the entire project. I'm running uh, a pump. I'm running a pump down here. It's going up, going to the flusher. It's peeing out. I got a bucket catching that. And I put in that much water in a tub and one gallon of Ridlime Marine Descaler. Like I said, my lower unit is off because I'm getting it resealed. Okay, so you would have your lower unit in this bucket if you were doing this. But you, you need a hose. These are nothing but dishwasher hoses. That's a pump from Home Depot. You got to get these hoses. And then see how I got a fitting in here to go into this garden hose flusher that I use. So you're gonna have to go from uh, female, male, female. So I got a little adapter here. And the next proof of the pudding is to see if this water is reaching the highest anode up here in the water jacket, because that's why we're doing this. We're doing this to flush the entire water jacket. And let me get in here. 
to hopefully, and I know it's a little dark, let me get the light, but either way, here's your VST tank right here. Here's your tr trim and tilt switch. You got your VST, vapor separating tank, and then behind it back in there is your fuel cooler. You will not believe on one of my videos, some guy, kid, whatever, thought that I put that in there. Why did you put a fuel cooler in your engine? There's so many clueless people out there that don't understand what's going on on a four-stroke outboard. And this person thought I put the fuel cooler in there. I said, no, highly trained PhD Suzuki engineers in Japan did it, not me. Oh my God, I wish I could just run through my, my YouTube channel and, and show you some of the comments, but you know how it goes. So right back in there is my VST tank. Okay, or my fuel cooler right back there. I will be probably doing a separate video of pulling this out, pulling that out, and putting a brand new one in. So uh, that's what clogs in the St. John's River, and you don't even know it. And what I'm trying to do right now is I'm going to let this run for hours and have that descaler running through my cooling system. People think when I say fuel cooler, they think we're cooling the fuel. Yes, we are. We're cooling the fuel with the St. John's River and ocean water. That's what's running through there. Two pipes running next to each other. Water that you're picking up from your outboard and with your water pump running through and it goes down on one side through a tube and other side goes your fuel. And it cools your fuel off just a little skosh. Because in the summer, running from spot to spot at 5,000 RPM, and then all of a sudden you pull up to fish and you turn your engine off, this probably goes to 200 degrees under here. And I don't know when unleaded gasoline vaporizes, but the minute it can't cool and, and start cooling off the fuel before it goes into the, into the uh, VST tank right there, before it, does, it can't go into the VST tank, and then over here and into your injectors, you're screwed. And a lot of people are having symptoms and they don't even know it. And then they go to the mechanic, the mechanic fixes it, and they don't even know what the mechanic just fixed. But you're getting vaporized, unleaded gasoline. Well, this is the most top anode. This is the top of your water jacket. Okay, that's cooling around the, your cylinders. Let's take a look and see if this red lime and water and everything is even making it up here. So I'm gonna use the, I'm gonna use the bolt to go in here. And I, I almost doubt it. Yep, dry as a bone. Dry as a bone, nothing even makes it up there. So what I'm going to do is instead of going through the flush port, I'm gonna go up in here and I'm gonna fill this up. The spray nozzle, that's rubber, and when you bend it, it shoots. I'll show you. See, when you sort of bend it, it shoots, and it's rubbery, and I'm sticking it in there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Well, as you can see, I pulled this uh, anode here. This, this compartment here is not filling up because I'm putting it in there. So I'll do the same thing here and I'm gonna check all of them. I'm just gonna run this in every single port, I believe, when it's all said and done. I'm lucky to have this hose. Customer of mine sent it. He called it a truck, a truck stop, you know, water sprayer because trucks can run over this. I've had this thing for, I don't know how many years. He sent me a couple of them. You could still buy them. It's the greatest sprayer known to man because it's so durable. Well, I'm just gonna stick this in everywhere. I'm gonna flush this out once and for all. And then I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna put all new O-rings and anodes on it. And the next time I'll check it will be, let's see, January, it'll be February, March, April, probably in May. 
I'll be doing this whole thing over again. Every, every three months they said to at least check your anodes according to the service manual, not the owner's manual, the service manual. I, I have the service manual plus I have the uh, software, this plug, this gray plug right here. That's where you plug in your computer. Okay, this is on the uh, starboard side of the engine, of course, where I'm doing all the work. Here's the oil dipstick. And this water jacket here is obviously fed probably from the bottom or something. But you know why this is here? Because of these transformers or what, I don't know what the hell they are. But they're, they're bedded on here and it's probably to keep these cool. All right, if you're not familiar with reed, red lime, I took my anodes and I threw it in the bucket where the pee water's coming out, the piss water, the tattletale, and I'm gonna let them sit in there and you're gonna watch how clean they're gonna come out. They're gonna come out smaller, but they'll probably come out nice and clean after soaking in there. Specially formulated for the marine industry. Dissolve zebra mussels, tiger shells, barnacles, lime, calcium, rust, and other mineral deposits that hinder performance in vital water systems. Biodegradable, non-hazardous, non-toxic, non-corrosive when used as directed. Most Ridline marine clean cleanings must be accomplished within two to four hours. There you go, it's great. And you know what else it fixes? mud and dirt. Didn't I tell you on one of my last videos when I was working on the Suzuki that I was going to do this in January? And many of you said, no, you're not going to be doing that right after your prostate surgery. No, you're not, because you won't be able to move. Well, guess what, folks? Those guys that said that were damn straight. I couldn't do shit for a week. But I'm back. I'm back like a stud thoroughbred peeing so good that I can drive a I can drive a hole in the sand I said I was gonna do this and here I am so the only time that I'm really gonna do something and I'm gonna go through the effort of making a video is because I get a good response if I don't get a good response and there's a lot that I don't like I was gonna do the history of why I why I have an aluminum custom built aluminum boat and I was gonna do that. You know how many responders I got out of all those views? Three. Three said, yeah, Dave, do it. Because there's at least one of you, there's Larry out there who's gonna be ordering his own aluminum boat. And I'll tell you, I couldn't have done it unless I personally talked to numerous people that had them. I needed it because I was going into uncharted territory ordering and building my own boat. I might do that video after all because it interests me, but it's gonna take a little time to kind of come up with a game plan. I only try to do videos anymore that I get good responses, lots of comments. If you're not giving me a thumbs up, you're not telling me anything. There's a lot of you that watch the videos. You don't give, you don't give the old thumbs up. I get thumbs downs, but um, that's how YouTube knows that you care about the video. You comment and you, you give it a like. It's the same bullshit as Facebook. Everything's about, ooh, like this, ooh, like that. That's what the world's coming to. Believe me, I don't like it. It's total bullshit, I believe, that you've, you only move up in the world with your credit score. You know, there's, there's movies about that. They're already doing it in China. If somebody doesn't like somebody and then they, they say something to them or they, they give them a thumbs down or do this, you get enough of that, you can't buy a house in China. You can't get a credit card in China. It's all a bunch of bullshit as far as I'm concerned. But that's the system. That's the system we have to play by on YouTube. All right, well, when I had that hose in here, I popped this one out and there was foam coming out. So I know right below it, of course, it should be getting it, right? So now I'm doing this side. And then I'm gonna go over and do the other 
four. And what I'm doing is I'm letting them run for quite a while while I'm, you know, drinking my PBR. All right, while we got the old big Suzuki on the, on the flushette, let's charterize this reel. Many of you probably have seen me do this before, but you can see right there, this level wind is dry as a bone. This reel's been sitting up. And what I do is I call charterize the reel. And that's because this reel is gonna be put up hard, it's gonna work hard for a living, right? It's gonna be in my customer's hands. And there you go. There's what's on one side of the spool. This is the side plate where the level line runs. And look at the, look at the dirt. That's just from taking it and just running this Q-tip in that bronze bearing. So what I do is I put a little lube in here. So that's the side plate. Now let's look in the side. Not one drop of lube or oil or anything. You take this spool out. On a, that's the reason this Timex watch of, of, uh, of reels is this reel right here. Right there is another bronze bushing. You know, everybody talks bearings, bearings. Oh, we got 42 bearings. I never said that these were super casters, but that's the bronze bearing on this side of the spool. So there you go. This is absolutely a pristine reel. About 30 to $40 off on eBay, but this reel is pristine. But what I do is I pack some grease all around the worm for the level wind and I put a dab of oil here. And then on the side plate, I put a dab of oil down in here. That's all I really do. And I call that charterizing it. And the reason being, they get used. My tackle gets used, it doesn't sit around. And the reason I have so many, and the reason my stuff lasts is because it gets cycled. I don't use every single one every day. I cycle them. What you do is you buy some spares. I mean, this reel is so simple, but so elegantly easy to work on. It's unbelievable. Product of Japan. So this is an old new one. The older, older ones that I have that are very old have a metal paw cap and right around the star they'll have a metal band and then the older older ones the throw switch here for the in engage disengage will be metal with a, like a little plastic insert knob that's how you tell they went from japan and then they took these and downgraded them turned them into malaysia built reels so this is a really good one but at the same time it's not the one with all the metal pieces all right, all finishy. See that grease in there? Use a little Lucas, uh, little Lucas. Red and tacky. But we're not precision casting with these folks. We're dropping to the bottom. We're working it hard. Anywhere from a hundred pound black tip shark to a bull red to a simple little croaker. Come on, that right there is ready to go. All right, I just ran it for a while in here. Take a look in there, folks. That had mud and dirt. There's a little bit over there. Let's see. Eh, I don't know, it just won't come off. But no crustiness. That's what we're looking for. Let's pull this one. That pump ain't doing a whole lot of pressure. Okay, let's take a uh, Nikron look at, at this. All right. Yeah, I could still see. It's clean. There's no super crust. Let's stick the old finger in there. Let's give her the finger test. She, that's what I'm concerned with. Mud, no mud. That's the reason we're doing this, folks. It's mostly mud. So, there you go. I'm going to work on the other side. 
and uh, then she'll be done. Oh, you know one thing that I've always failed to mention is the reason I'm kind of keyed in on an anodes is because I have an aluminum boat. Not that that has anything to do with it. It just makes me very aware. See, down here is a two pound anode. That is the zinc plate on my boat, literally bolted into the boat. Then I even have another one right here. I got a double disc. It's on the inside and the outside. And this one really gets eaten up. That one takes a little while longer. Okay, so when I see these getting eaten up and they're on my boat, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, just like this one. You got this one on your outboard, right? And you need to pay attention to these. Because if these start disappearing really fast, you've got a serious problem. So being that I have an aluminum boat, I'm kind of aware of that type of thing. And I see a lot of John boats and stuff that have nothing, nothing. And they need to have, in my opinion, then why the hell do I have two pounds of zincs on my aluminum boat, right? Why do I have that? Because I have it to protect the hull and then I have zincs on my aluminum outboard to protect my aluminum outboard. So you folks out there that have these aluminum boats and you're using them in salt water, you don't have the first zinc on your hull. So that means one thing, that if you have an issue on your boat, it's gonna eat up your outboard and it's gonna eat up your zincs. And then if you don't pay attention to your zincs on your outboard, then it's gonna start eating your outboard too. So that's sort of the way it goes. Zincs are protection for the boat. And then I got zincs protection for the aluminum outboard. It's funny how these goofball people who don't know shit from Shinola go, oh, I would never have an aluminum boat. It's going to just disappear. It's going to get eaten up. Well, tell the United States Coast Guard, United States Navy, United States Marine Corps, every other governmental agency, the state of Florida, all these people that have commercial-grade aluminum boats. Tell them that. Really? You got an aluminum outboard. What the hell's the difference? You protect your boat, you protect your outboard. It's just that simple. That's the anode that I pulled out and it's been sitting in the rid line. That's one of them. All the salt, all the grime is gone. Even though I'm putting in brand new ones or put use these for down in the lower unit, down in the, the, down in the low water pickup. That's what I'll use these for. So just goes to show you that rid line makes them pretty squeaky clean and that's what's gonna do hopefully to the inside of my engine. All right, let me reiterate here one moment. A lot of people come to my channel, right? They come to my channel, they make some comment, they blah, blah, blah. They don't know because they don't look into it. I'm in the charter fishing business in Jacksonville, Florida, and I'm going on my 24th year. My engine and my tackle, my boat, my truck, is my livelihood. So that's the reason I'm doing what I do. Everything on my channel is to learn from my experiences because it matters to me. I've never been in it for the glory trip. I've been in it because this is how I make my living, this and YouTube, that's all I do. That's sort of how it works on Captain Dave's Sport Fishing YouTube channel. I spend a lot of money on things because I am the business, as the business am I. And maintaining my outboard has been my top priority. That's the thing, before you make some comment where you don't know where I'm coming from, that's where I'm coming from. All right, folks, I'm about to button this project up for the night. It's darker than a god dang new moon at the end of the Mayport jetties. So, what did I accomplish? Probably because my lower unit isn't on, it's not creating any pressure up, and I couldn't just pump with with my 1,680 gallon pump. I couldn't, it seemed I couldn't reach all the way up here to the top of the water jacket. 
to flush that out. So I took this sprayer, which when you bend it, it sprays. And when it's straight, it stops. It's really a cool sprayer. And I stuck it. I pulled each one out of here, took the actual anode off, and then plugged the rest and stuck this in each hole. I've got the time to do this because my lower unit is out with the mechanic getting sealed and my prop was getting all refinished. So I went in every single one of these that I showed you earlier. And this puts out quite a spray because it's a little tiny hole and you squeeze it and it sprays. And it's perfect because I mean, it, it fit right into the water jacket holes. Right now I'm just flushing it out with some fresh water. I did all seven holes. I changed all seven anodes and all seven O-rings. And next I'm gonna show you if there's any debris left in the bottom of that barrel that it was all running in. Just to give you some perspective, I had the rid lime running through every single one of those holes that the interior anodes go in. And it was all draining into this tub. Now I'm going to drain this tub into a plastic bowl and I think you're going to be amazed after three months. And this is me running my engine with fresh water for the last three months in this Rubbermaid 70 gallon barrel every single time I come home. Let me show you what's in the bottom of this barrel. In three months since I did my last flush. There you go, folks. That's the whole back corner. To give you some perspective, that's this big container. And look at this. Look at what's inside my engine. Oh my god. That's what Ridline is getting out. It looks exactly like the stuff that comes out of my outboard into my big barrel every time I run my engine out uh, when I come back. There you go. That's what the St. John's River puts in your engine. The reason I'm doing all this is because this is what, along with salt, will clog your fuel cooler on your Suzuki, and if not, your Yamaha and everything else. I've shown this in videos I don't know how many times so far, but it's so important. You know, you got them hoo-yahs out there that think, I'm inventing this. PhD engineers of Suzuki are figuring this out, that that's what this needs on a mega hot day. You've got fuel on one side of this tube behind the VST tank. You have water going on this side. Look how that's going in. It's going in on an abrupt right-hand turn. If this gets clogged, your fuel starts vaporizing on a 110 degree day in the shade. After you ran a wrong hard run and you turned it off, you anchored up, you start fishing, the more this gets clogged, the more your fuel starts vaporizing. It happened to me and that I don't want to happen again. That is the fuel cooler behind the VST tank. And this is what clogs it. So it's a losing battle. It's a, almost a losing battle. What you have to do to stop this, I guess, is as I'm going to do. I am pulling this out, and it's, I'm putting this one in, taking the, old, the one I have in there out, and I'm going to clean it and have it ready. That shuts me down. I cannot have that happening. That goes in here and gets, it gets hot. It's hot in there. You take salt water, you go in with debris, and it starts caking on the sides of this, okay? And that's because water goes in here, fuel is on this side, cooling your fuel. That's why it's called a fuel cooler. It's nothing I invented. 
Suzuki engineers came up with it, okay? So that is a chink in the armor. But oh my God. Now that's running in every port. And look at it. It's soft and it's muddy. It goes in here, turns, and clogs it up. I cannot wait to take my fuel cooler out and see what the deal is. But stand by for that video. All right? This is all too much information for most people, but there you go. Wait till I pull this out and we're going to see what the story is because this is what shuts you down on a hot summer day. When that is vape your fuel is vaporizing and it's not being cooled. In the St. John's River, it's a ticking time bomb. Well, no, it's not a ticking time bomb. It's a ticking, hello, and thank you for your money. And as mechanics love to say, yeah, I can get to it in two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Thanks for watching.